Hey friends, today I'm gonna share how I pulled off my longest single print by far. And it all started out with this tiny print. In October, I shared this three by three arrangement of auxetic cubes, a fun little swively object that is quite satisfying to fidget with. And auxetics is this curious property where a material stretched in one direction will also expand perpendicular to the force being applied. It's a really satisfying action, and while I didn't know exactly what to do with it, I knew that I wanted to continue exploring this structure. Thanks to Thanks for sponsoring the competition portion of this video. Keep watching to see how you can win a Bamboo Lab A1 Mini with AMS Lite. I've already shared my first invention inspired by Auxetics, which is my Skubits game. It's a puzzle that involves these swiveling pieces, but these parts don't actually have auxetic properties. I just happened to have a failed print that led to these shapes. I did want to come up with some fun ideas using the actual auxetic structures, so I carried on and started messing around with the shapes and sizes of this basic design that I created in Fusion 360. I noticed this original design was a bit floppy because of the clearances required to print this in place. So I created a stacked variation with two hinges on each corner, and that makes the part feel much more solid and smooth, aka even more satisfying. Naturally, I also wanted to see how small I could make these structures without changing the hinges, and that resulted in these auxetic scales. This one's a bit harder to manipulate because of the hinge density, but it does hold its expanded shape better, so maybe that could lead to some interesting applications of its own. I scaled it down around 80% and the hinges still worked, so it is possible to get everything a bit smaller. And then there's this double scale version, which moves really smoothly, so clearly size does have an effect on the ease of motion. So I also went the other way and made this larger grid with 30 millimeter squares, along with these dual color tiles that pop into place. Beyond being auxetic, this particular structure is also cool because of how the squares rotate relative to one another. That allows us to create these transforming artworks. This checker pattern is pretty cool, but my favorite tiles so far are these diagonally split ones because these can be arranged to create all sorts of different patterns, like these concentric diamonds, or these arrows that turn into a zigzag pattern. So this is already really cool. I love the fact that these super simple tiles can be combined to create large and impressive images. So I decided to go ahead and go as big as I possibly could with the machines and materials I had. That meant pushing Fusion 360 to its absolute limits. So it was extremely slow and annoying to work with, but I still managed to create my 22 by 22 square grid that covers the 450 by 450 millimeter bed of my largest printer, which is the CR10 Max. This printer is relatively old by now, and I've rarely used it simply because I don't print many things that require such a massive build volume, but this is its time to shine. So I dusted it off, lubricated the bearings, prayed to my electricity provider, and started the daunting print. 484 interconnected cubes, and the double height stacked variation at that led to a 1.2 gigabyte g-code file with an estimated 314 hour print time and going through over half a mile of filament. Right off the bat, I caught a tangle in the filament spool and that never happens to me. So we weren't off to the best start. The first layer alone took over three hours and things were looking pretty good until I noticed a single detached square six hours in. That was pretty tragic, but I did get to do this. So that kind of made up for it. Anyways, for attempt number two, I made sure my bed was really clean with no finger grease. I gave it a dusting of hairspray 
and I printed the first layer slightly closer to the bed. That seemed to do the trick, and 127 hours in, things were still looking good. Unfortunately, since this print requires 2.8 kilograms of filament, and I only have one kilogram spools, I would have to stay vigilant and pull off several flawless filament swaps to make this work. That was extra scary because sometimes this printer won't line up exactly perfectly after pausing the print, so instead I decided to just manually feed each new spool of filament in while the print continued chugging along. Somehow, after over two weeks of continuous printing, I had my completed model. Still, that wasn't the end of it because I needed to successfully remove this enormous print from the print bed. And as many of you may know, build tech beds like this can have quite the gripping force. So I ended up clamping the bed down to my workbench and carefully working my way around this print with several spatulas separating it little by little like some futuristic archaeologist. Even after removing the print, the hinges were still a bit stiff due to stringiness in the print, so I had to do some cleanup with the heat gun and the X-Acto knife, and I just slowly worked the hinges back and forth, little by little, until the hundreds of hinges all got smoothed out enough to complete the full range of motion. Pretty dang cool, and quite heavy. But as intense as this print is, it was only the beginning because I wanted tiles on every single square to make a massive and intricate transforming artwork. So one part down, 500 to go. Here's a mock-up I created in Adobe Illustrator to settle on a design and color scheme. I'm going with this semi-abstract Viking type demon face and I liked the idea of combining a matte Polyterra blue filament with this fluorescent green that is Matterhacker's Ectoplasm Green Pro PLA. I print these tiles using the multi-pass multicolor technique, where the second color is simply printed on top of the first. It can produce some really clean multicolor surfaces, so I use it all the time. Unfortunately, I found out that this matte PLA sticks to build tech even more than normal PLA, so I lost a lot of tiles that way, but eventually I got enough decent ones to pull off my art piece. The build tech can also cause some whitening on the surface of the filament, so I chose to do a very quick flame polish of the top surfaces to restore the original vibrant colors. Too much heat will quickly warp the PLA, so it's a bit of an art form but I also decided to just accept the slight variations in the tiles rather than striving for absolute perfection as we often do in 3D printing. In this case, I think the slight differences in all the tiles will add to the texture and interest of the piece. Now, before we stick on our tiles, let's just appreciate this bare print one last time. This thing is so satisfying to play with and the fact that it came off of the printer in one piece is pretty wild. Due to the combined clearances between every single hinge, this structure has become less strictly auxetic and quite a bit more flowy. It's really cool. All right, let's pop all of these tiles into place. This step was pretty easy. I was just following an image of the pattern that I'd already created on my computer earlier, and before too long, my graphic was complete. This looks awesome, and it's every bit as flowy as before. Now it just has the added magic of the transforming image. The easiest way to switch images is with a decisive spin, and then a jiggle as the hinges settle into place. I'm really happy with how this turned out. The colors are vibrant, the graphic is super striking, and ambiguous enough to encourage imagination. 
And of course, the motion and transformation mechanism is probably still the coolest part. But there is one more thing. That ectoplasm green just so happens to fluoresce like crazy under a black light. So that's a pretty awesome addition as well. Well, that was quite the adventure of a make, but I think this resulting artwork was absolutely worth it. I do still have a few more exciting transforming prints to share today, but first, I think this is a great time to announce the Auxetic Art Competition. Don't worry, you won't have to endure this 13-day print, but I do want to see what you all can do with these triangular tiles. So this contest is about printing auxiliary cubes at any of the sizes that I've provided for download on Thangs and creating your own transforming auxetic artwork using only the diagonal tiles. That may seem pretty limited, but I believe there are a lot of cool designs to be discovered within this format. Since the tiles are all individual prints, it is possible to get very colorful. And as I've hopefully demonstrated with this giant piece, the diagonal tiles can create a lot of different unique shapes depending on how you put them together. To enter, all you've got to do is make your auxetic artwork and submit a photo or photos of your completed print as a make under the diagonal tile page on Thangs. Two winners will be decided by the community with the most liked makes winning $100 and $200 gift cards towards Matter Hackers or 3D Jake. And I will personally pick my very favorite make to win a Bamboo Lab A1 Mini 3D printer with AMS Lite. The competition starts now and it'll run for one full month. So make sure to check out the video description for the full details. I can't wait to see what you all come up with, but before I go, I have yet another massive auxetic print to share. As cool as this transforming art is, I wanted to figure out a more functional use for these auxetic structures. And while testing different shapes, I came up with these auxetic rectangles. This piece is interesting because when you swivel it, the overall shape of the print changes from this more square-like surface to this wide and narrow rectangle. That gave me the idea of building an auxetic end table, something that could shapeshift, perhaps for the sake of storage or to better suit different spaces. I'm not exactly sure, but it sounded cool. To pull this off, I decided to switch to this beautiful 0.8 millimeter diamond back nozzle, which should help ensure me a cleaner and quicker print. I also scaled up my whole design by 200%, so all the hinges are hopefully really robust and this might even serve as a functional table. Once again, this print took up the entire bed of my CR10X Max, but thanks to the larger nozzle and less complex design, it only took around 100 hours to print. To turn it into a table, I screwed on these IKEA feet that I happened to find at a thrift store. And I also made a few custom tiles for the top surface these groovy lava lamp style blobs that tile in every direction. So it's continuous whichever position you swivel it to. Here is the finished table. And honestly, I was a bit skeptical that it would be stiff enough to work as a table, but this thing is not bad at all for a first proof of concept. Here it is as a square table. And to transform it, I'll just grab two opposing feet and give it a little twist. Just like that, we've got our more rectangular shape. I could even use it in the expanded position like this, if you don't mind a few holes. And that gives us a really nice and big table. I think it's pretty awesome that this table is now larger than the printer that it was printed on. Clearly, the exploration I've done so far is only scratching the surface. So I might be spending even more time on this idea because I just find it really captivating and inspiring. However, that is everything I've got for you today. So I'll be throwing all these files on things.com for you to download. I am so excited to see the auxetic artworks that you come up with. Good luck on that competition. And thanks to Thangs for providing the prizes. That's all for now. So 
get out there, make some cool stuff, and as always, stay inspired.